No, can, it, uh, can we circle back real quick before we get off of playing offense for portfolio companies? I want to come come back to your time at PayPal. It struck me that like I didn't realize that PayPal didn't have a business model or at least a viable business model until after the crash. Um, as I kind of think about like the hierarchy of impacts of change you can have as a startup, you know, there's sort of like at the bottom is like sales and marketing and then nothing at sales and marketing. And then at the mid level is, is product, but actually the highest level I always think is, is changing a, a business model. Um, now is kind of a really good opportunity to do that. How did you guys think about, you know, when there was the necessity of, okay, you need to make revenue now, but how did you, how did you figure out that business model so quickly uh, during that time at PayPal? Necessity is the mother of invention. <laughs> um, I don't think it was that difficult to figure out that as a payments company, there were so many precedents of charging transaction-based fees. Um, I think there were some other nuances where we figured out how to get bank account funding so that we had a much higher gross margin than traditional um, credit card processors did. So there's some other things we did. We also had to figure out solutions to online fraud, which took down many of our competitors and was a very expensive thing for for us as well, we lost millions of dollars in 2000 to scalable online fraud. Um, but I think that you know, part of what we talked about at the company was at the end of the day, if, if we can't keep the company alive because people are willing to pay for the service we provide, we don't really have a reason to exist. Right? We need to deliver enough value so that whatever we charge leaves enough of a gap of value capture to the customer where they're happy to pay for the service we have. And, and I think many companies may face that type of a crucible moment over the next six months if they've been free services or if their business model hasn't really been refined properly. But it's clarifying at some level. Yeah, where you're really forced to, to show up in a way that, that says, uh, hey, I am delivering enough value here to, uh, um, to charge for it. And I think, what, what's, the, what's the quote about, is it a Warren Buffett quote? Um, uh, you know who has their uh, their shorts on when the tide goes out. Yeah. <laughs> Man, we're, we're treading out all these. Quotes. I think it might be uh, Howard Marks, actually. <laughs> Is it okay? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll give you another one that we used actually this week uh, in a partnership, which is um, "Calm seas never made a good sailor." Yeah, hmm. we've had a long period so of calm of seas. We have, and this is going to be a time where I think you're really going to see people differentiate themselves and how they deal with the crisis. You know, who yeah. steps up, who provides leadership, who reminds a company of the mission of the company, the purpose that they have beyond just, you know, delivering a product. Those are the sort of companies that I think can really excel in a time of crisis.